Praise Jesus, praise the Almighty God, praise the Heavenly Father. So I'm from the Rock Intercessor Ministry. I'm here to preach to you this morning, hoping that some of you give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So let me ask you a question. Who is Jesus Christ to you? You see, these days many people have different kind of viewpoint about Jesus Christ. Some people say he's a prophet. No, he's not. He's more than a prophet. Some people call him the big man upstairs. No, that's a bad way to describe your God. Some people say he's a religious leader. No. Jesus Christ is God. Amen. He's the Almighty God that created you in His own image. In fact, the Bible says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. So Jesus Christ is the creator of the universe. He's my Lord. He's your love. Amen. So let me ask you, do you have a place in your heart for Jesus? You see? So many of you today think Jesus Christ just want to have a place in your heart. No. Jesus Christ desires, deserves, and demands that you have permanent in, in, his, in, your, in your life in Him. You see, Apostle Paul said, in Christ we live and we move and have our being. And that is why I'm here to preach to you this morning. You see, so most of you don't know who Jesus Christ is. Listen to what Apostle Paul said in the book of Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. He said, if you have risen with Christ, seek the thing that is above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the thing that is above, not only on the thing that is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. And when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Then verse 5, you say, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you? Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, conversionlessness, what is adultery? And then verse, verse 11, it says this, there's nothing like Greek or Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian ancestry, and slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. Then you have a people... Christ is in all and in all. And that is why I'm here to preach to you this morning. And then he says that Christ is our life. What a wonderful statement. Christ is my life as well. I go along with Apostle Paul. Christ is my life, you see. Christ just don't want to be only God to you. He wants to be your life, you see. Whether in life and death. Because Apostle Paul says this in the book of Philippians chapter 1 verse 21. He said, for to him, that's Apostle Paul speaking about him. I, I go the same way as well. For me, is to live in Christ. And for me to die is gain. Let me tell you something. Are you a Christian? You have faith in God? When you die, don't cry. Amen? It's an upgrade. Amen? It's an upgrade because you know where you're going. You see, that's why we Christians, we are not afraid to die because when we die, we know where we're going. You see? Then he said, Jesus Christ is not only in him, but also in life and in death. You see? And that's why the Bible is encouraging you this morning. Hoping that some of you will give your life to Jesus Christ. Then he said, Jesus Christ is in all and in all. So do you listen to what he's saying? He said, Jesus Christ is in him. So that means everything that you have this morning belongs to Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible said that I have been crucified with him. You see? So that means me personally, Kinsley, I've been crucified with God. When I took my first baptism two years ago, I, I was put inside the water and that's when I died. And when I come up from the water, that's when I rose again with death. And I can see devil was crying that day because he see my old face being crucified. He couldn't even believe this guy gonna be saved. You see, based on all the lifestyle that I have lived in the past, which do not give God the glory. That is why I'm this morning to preach to you. You see, so the sheep mourner that day was the devil himself. He was there weeping, seeing my old self being died. And then he says in verse one, he said, "For you have risen with Christ, so that means you are dead with Christ." So in the death of Jesus Christ, when you die with him, devil cannot come back and say, where is your sin? Do you know why? Because you crucify with Christ. You see? So if devil wants to get me, you need to go to God the Father. You need to go to God the Son, Jesus Christ. Let me see if you can find any sin in Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus Christ, when he came in life, he came in the flesh, he said, none of you can accuse him of any wrongdoing. He couldn't accuse him because why? He came through the Virgin Mary, so that means he didn't have Adam's sin. He didn't have a personal sin as well because why he's a god he's a savior that's why this man asking you this morning do you know what jesus christ is because apostle paul said when christ who is in our life appears then also we appear with him in glory you see so if you don't know christ when you die you cannot meet him do you know that you cannot see him you cannot be judged you see that's why the bible says absent from the body present with the lord and it's appointed a day and a time for a man to die after their comes work come judgment. That's why I'm preaching to you this morning. Praying through the minister of the Holy Spirit to touch your heart 
Hoping that some of you give your life to Jesus Christ this morning, see? Because when you die, you're going to be judged. That's why I'm encouraging you this morning. Then Apostle Paul says this. He said, in him, that's Jesus Christ, hidden all the treasure of wisdom and knowledge. You see, the worldly wisdom is quite interesting, isn't it? Man only knows the thing that is below. Man don't know anything that is above. Why? Because man's ways and their deeds are evil. That's why I say, it's like looking at a dog. When a dog is, when a dog is running and saw a bird flying up there in the sky, the dog is chasing the shadow of the bird. Why? Because his eyes is on the ground. That's why the Bible is telling this man to do what? To fix your eyes above. And who is living up there above? It's God, Jesus Christ, living above. That's why the Bible says, set your mind on him. That's why God created in a, in a way whereby he cannot think two things at the same time. You see, because you have one mindset at a goal. So if you set your mind, that means you're paying attention on the thing that is what is above. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says, fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. Who is the author and finisher of your faith? And that's why the Bible says, well, seek God. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, seek God, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will be added to you. Are you seeking God this morning? Do you commit with, do you have a communion with God? Because Christianity is not about legalism. It's about one love relationship, you see? And that is why I'm coming this morning to offer to you the word of God. And I pray to God that some of you will give your life to Jesus Christ. Amen? Because the Bible says, fix your eyes on the thing that is above. Are you looking down on people? When you look down, do you know you cannot look up? You see? That's why the word of God is giving you a way out this morning for you to do what? To give your life to Jesus Christ. Because many of you today don't know who Jesus Christ is. And that is why I'm here to encourage you to the word of God. And I pray to the minister of the Holy Spirit, to the minister of the word, for you to receive salvation. The Bible says, faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ. And that is why I'm here to offer you this money. You see, many of us have our mindset in different kind of things. The three things I want you to learn today through the word of God is to do what? To seek God. There's no negotiation. Seek God. And the Bible says what? Seek God. Set your minds on the thing that is above. And the third one, the Bible says, well, put off your old person, your old man, your old self. Crucify your flesh. The Bible says, put it to death. I mean, get rid of your flesh. There's nothing good that is in your flesh. The Bible says it must be crucified. Because the Bible gives us the list of the things whereby you need to be crucified. It will amaze you, see, because the word of God is pure. The word of God is true. And the word of God is telling you to do what? Put away anything that did not give God the glory. Any sinful lifestyle that you have in your life, he you said, get rid of get rid of them. How do you get rid of them? By accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. You can do it yourself. That's why most of you are still smoking. You cannot stop smoking. Why? Because it's your flesh. The same way some of you yeah, stuck yeah. in drugs, you can never stop taking drugs. Why? Because it's in your flesh. The same way some of you have sexual immorality, lifestyle, you cannot stop it because why? It's in your flesh. The same way some of you drink non-stop, you cannot stop binge drinking. Why? Because it's in your flesh. So your way out this morning is to accept Jesus Christ. As your Lord and personal Savior. That's why the Word of God is warning you this morning. That anyone who is living that kind of lifestyle should not do what? Enter into the kingdom of God. That's why every animal and plant, you name it, they are very clever. You see fish. If you try to remove fish from the water, I want to go back. You see, you see how clever animals are? You see a bird that is flying up the sky. If it's not flying, it's a happy bird. The same way you have a seed. If you don't put it on the ground, it cannot grow. But you, human being, in neglect your God, your creator. The Bible says it is a duty of a man to serve God and to obey him. But what do we do this morning? When you wake up this morning, do you pray? Do you read the Bible? Do you communicate with God? Do you say thank God for waking me up this morning? Do you know many people in the prison? Do you know many people in the hospital? Do you know many people have died? Do you know there's no repentance in grave? And that is why I'm here to give you the word of encouragement, hoping that some of you will give your life to Jesus Christ. Because there will be a time you have no time anymore. You are on time out. You see? That is why today you need to repent, you see? And then again, the word of God is to encourage you. Are you a Christian this morning? Do you know who God is? The Bible is telling you to do what? You must learn how to hate. Amen? Are you a Christian? You must learn how to hate. You must hate sin. You see? Because sin destroys your life. The Bible says sin is like a it's like a beast thing. You see? That's why the word of God says that God hates sin. You see? The Bible also says that anyone who loves God must hate 
sin. Some of us this day, the, the, we don't want to open our mouth and say that we hate sin. Let me tell you something. As a child of God, you must do that. Amen? Then the Bible tells you again to do what? To put off your old self. And what did he say? He said, put them to death. He said, your earthly that is in you, your sexual immorality, your impurity, your passion, your evil desire, your covetousness, your adultery. And the Bible says, on account of this, the wrath of God is coming. And you would once walk in them, but now you are living in them. He said, but now put all of them away. The first one is anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk, people like to cause from your mouth. He said, then do not lie to one another, but sin that you have put off your own self with his practice. Are you practicing sin? Do you know the difference between me now, me today and me two years ago? Two years ago, I used to practice sin. I walked in the nightclub for 17 years. I used to practice sin. But these days, I cannot do that because why? I have the Holy Spirit of God living in me. That is why the Word of God is encouraging this man to do what? To accept God so that he cannot continue going back to your old ways of life. The Bible says, put it to death. You see? And why God said this? Why? Because he wants you to do what? To hate sin. You have to put it to death forcefully and immediately, no wasting time, not even tomorrow. You want to change your mindset to give your life to God and put to death your sinful ways of lifestyle. The Bible said that anyone who loves God must hate sin. These days, what do we have in society? People promoting pride, people promoting sin, people call what is good bad, what is bad good. And Christians also fall into this trap. They can't even open their mouth to say, I hate this sin. What a shame. The word of God is warning you because most Christians today, they're living in twilight zone. They cannot differentiate between light and wrong. They cannot differentiate between darkness and light. But the word of God is shining the light into your heart this morning, you see? Because whoever loves God must do what? Hate sin, you see? Just as you hate, you love justice, you hate sin. Just as you have high, you have love. Just as you have aim, you have art. Just as you, you, you love flower, you hate weed. And I hate the smell of the weeds as well. You see? So, in the life that you are living, that do not give God the glory, the word of God is encouraging you to do or stay away from it and hate sin. You see? Do you know God hates? Do you know that God that created you hate? I have a proof for you here to show you in the book of Proverbs the things God hates. God hates sin. Are you living in sin? God hates sin. In the book of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to, 17, to 18, he said there are six things that God hates. Seven that is abomination to him. Haunted eyes. So that means pride. Most of you today are celebrating gay pride. Do you know God hates pride? So that's the one in there for you. Another one is lying tongue. Do you like to lie? He never said the truth. The word of God is warning you. Another one has that share innocent blood. So that means abortion. God hates abortion. Do you know that? Yes. Amen. God hates abortion. You see, so anything that you are living today, there are things God hates. That's why I'm, I'm telling you this morning, God hates some things. You know, God giving us the six things and the seven things that he hates. And then another one is what? He says, the heart that devises wicked plan, the faith that hates to run evil, and a false witness who breaks out lies, and one who so discord among the brothers. I you like to cause trouble in the church? The word of God is warning you right now because God hates that, you see? So this is the God hate parade. You see, and this is what we do, we celebrate evil. But God is telling what to hate it. You see, just as I'm telling you now, if you love justice, you must hate crime. You see, if you love God, you must hate sin. So as a Christian, you need to learn how to hate. You see, people will call you double, uh, close-minded. Accept it. In fact, the Bible says that you cannot move with unbelievers. If you show me your friend, I'll tell you who you are. You see, that is why you see we Christians will go to church. We praise God, we go to Navy, you go to have fellowship, worship God. Why? Because we love God. Most of you go to football pitch, most of you go to cricket, most of you go and commit crime, most of you go to pub, that's where you like to go. Most of you like to go to nightclub, no, we go to Navy jail. Most of you like to go to football matches on Sunday with your children. We, we, can, we take our children to the house of the Lord. You see, so the things that you like, we hate. You see? And it is okay to hate because the Bible says, well, you should hate sin. The Bible says God hates sin. Listen to what man of God says in the book of Psalm 119, verse 110. He said, to the priest that I get understanding, therefore I hate false ways. You see? So this day, the, the, word, uh, the people try to tell you to kind of hang around, hold each other's hand. No, the Bible says no. 
Are you living in sin? Are you are you are you, are you a homosexual person? Are you are you a lesbian? The word of God said, repent. He said, I love you, but I hate the sin. I hate the sinful lifestyle. Amen. I hate any sin, any sin that God hates. And that is why I'm preaching to you this morning. Do you like to drink? The Bible says, as a Christian, you should hate sin and I hate drinking. I hate alcohol. Yes, I said it. He says, the Bible says drugs. I hate drugs. The Bible says you should hate anything that will do what? Contaminate your body. You see, are you are you sleeping around, having sleepover? The Bible says it's fornication. I hate that. That's what it says. Are you doing uh, pornography? The Bible says it is a sin. I hate that. You see, anything that God hates, as a child of God, I must hate it. You see, just as you love justice, you hate crime. The same way God hates sin. God loves you, but He hates your sin. You see, do you, uh, do you have any sin in your life? You need to repent. Amen. Most people today, they are shy away about actually preaching the word of God, saying it as it is, as the Bible said it. The Bible said there are six things God hates, seven things that is abomination to him. Hunting eyes, do you have pride in your life? God said he hates pride. Do you know why the devil was kicked out from, the, from heaven? Because why pride was finding him. Pride is one of the things that the Bible mentions here. And then again, the Bible says, hand that shall innocent blood. Are you doing abortion? The Bible says it is a sin. God hates it. I also hate it. Do you understand my point? Anything that God hates, I hate it. You see? Are you a person who would like to go and commit crime? The Bible says, well, it is a sin. I hate that as well. You see? Are you going in church causing problem? The Bible says, what? He hates that. I also hate that. You see? So it is okay to hate. Because before you can love, you must learn how to hate. You hate crime. I hate crime. I love justice. You love justice. That's why God punished his son, Jesus Christ, and he came in the flesh to die. You think God going to spare you? Seriously? Do you think God going to spare you when you die? If he could not spare his own son, he killed his own son, and you are still living in sin, and you tell me it is okay, that when I preach it, it comes hate preaching. No. You, 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 you hate God, and because you hate God, I also hate your, your, your sinful lifestyle. You need to repent. And give your life to Jesus Christ because Christ came in the flesh and died. And the Bible says he was crucified. He nailed everything on the cross. And that is a way out. Are you talking about salvation? God has already offered it to you. The question is this. Are you willing to take it? You know Christmas is already at hand. You receive gifts. Everybody is so happy. Do you know why? Do you know why there's Christmas? Do you think Christmas is about the Christmas tree? Or the Santa? No. God bless you, sir. Amen. No. Amen. So the same way God is telling you that anything God hates, you must hate it. Do you know God hates homosexuality? I hate homosexuality. It's a sin. Not to you as a person. I hate the lifestyle. Amen. I love you as a human being, but I hate your sin and you must repent. Are you a lesbian? The same thing goes to you. Are you a pastor that cannot zip up your pants? The same thing also goes to you. Are you a child of God in the house of God doing boyfriend and girlfriend? I also hate that sin. Are you on the dating website? Are you watching pornography? Are you doing manifestation? Anything that you are doing that do not give God the glory, the Bible says God hates sin. So if God hates sin, I also hate sin. You see? So it is okay to hate. Amen? It is okay to hate sin. Amen? You cannot serve God and at the same time love sin. The Bible says he who loves God must hate sin. Amen? So this society we are living in political correctness. No, I don't do political correctness. Amen? That's why when I preach, I preach the word of God because it is the word of God. Only if the changes in this country that you can preach about the word of God, then I can understand that. But as far as we can preach the word of God, I continue to preach it because at the end of the day, I'm not here to please man. I'm not here to please you. You see, I'm here to please God. And that is why God sent me this morning to tell you there are six things God has, seven things that is abomination to him. You see? So you need to repent and give your life to Jesus Christ, you see? Because when Jesus Christ came, he said, he is the way. So that means every other way, every other religion is false religion. Do you know that? He said, he is the truth. So that means every other religion you have been lied to. He said, he is the life. So that means every other religion don't have life in them. Because the Bible says, where there's no spirit of God, there is death. That's why the Bible says, body without spirit is dead. So that means, are you going to church? Are you going to anything these days? You going to like different kind of places? If there's no spirit of Christ, Jesus, the Bible says, well, that that place of place of worship, if it's not church, is dead. Even if it's church, that you are living in sin, and pastor is okay to welcome everybody who is living in sin. There's no spirit of God there. Why? Because the church is dead. 
The body without spirit is dead. That's why the Bible said that absent from God, after from absent from body, present with the Lord. So that is why I'm here to offer you a way out this morning. And I pray to the minister of the Holy Spirit, to the minister of the word, because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the word of God will come inside your heart and to lead it eternal life. Because when you die, you need to give account to God. And on that person I think of I can is Jesus Christ. What have you used your time in this life to do? That's why the Bible said, Don't look down, look up. He said, Look up. He said, Fix your eyes on heaven. And we sit on the heaven, Jesus Christ. He said, Seek God. Then he said, Put off your old self. So that means you need to crucify your flesh. And you need to kill the old man. That old man is your flesh. Not your old daddy. Your old man is your flesh. The Bible said, Crucify your flesh. The Bible says in, in second. Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 is saying, if we are in Christ Jesus Christ, all things have passed away, you are a new creation. So that means you become a new man. Amen. So that means God will give you a way out. That is why when you have the Holy Spirit, you cannot go back to the place you used to go. I don't go back to the place I used to go. They might not think I don't love them, no, but I hate the sin there. Why should I go there? You see, that's why the word of God is giving you a way out. But everything that God loves, you love that, you love it. Anything that God hates, you must hate it. If you don't hate it, you can't, you can't be in kingdom of God and kingdom of darkness at the same time. You cannot think two things at the same time. That's why when God says, set your mind on the things that is above, where God lives. And I pray that this word is not and care of in your ears. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Men blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless. Goodbye.